Hey and welcome back. Excuse the sparkly appearance, I've been using the wonderful new milling machine. I remember at film school, my tutor said to me, Simon, go and make a film about subject you know nothing about because you'll really begin to understand it. And that's what I'm going to do today because I have a question and I think I found the answer to a mystery. Whatever happened to the iron lung? Those of you growing up in the 50s will remember the horror of the polio epidemic. Kids seemed very badly affected and they ended up in an iron lung. What is an iron lung and why don't we have them today with the COVID-19 respiratory problems? Well, an iron lung is also known as a tank ventilator or named after the inventor, a drinker tank. It's a type of mechanical respirator which encloses most of a person's body and varies the air pressure in the enclosed space to stimulate breathing. It assists breathing when muscle control is lost, such as when you get polio. And with all great inventions, they're really old. It was actually invented by an English scientist, John Mayo, in, wait for this, 1670. Mayo came up with a concept of external negative pressure ventilation. He built a model consisting of bellows and a bladder to pull in and expel air. The first negative pressure ventilator was described by the Scottish physician John Dalziel in 1832. Early prototypes included a hand-operated bellows-driven spirophore designed by a Dr. Woolitz of Paris in 1876. It then became an airtight wooden box by Dr. Stewart of South Africa in 1918. Stewart's box sealed the body at the waist and was powered by motor-driven bellows. But the iconic iron lung that we all know from the 1950s was invented in the USA by Dr. Drinker. Philip Drinker and his assistant Louis Shaw came from the Harvard School of Public Health. The air machine was powered by an electric motor and used vacuum cleaners as air pumps. The first clinical use of the drinker respirator was on children in the Boston Hospital in 1928. An eight-year-old girl who was nearly dead of respiratory failure due to the 1920s outbreak of polio dramatically recovered in less than a minute after being placed in the iron lung. Rows of iron lungs filled hospital wards at the height of the polio outbreaks in the 1940s and 50s. They helped children and even adults whose diaphragm was paralyzed by polio. They would typically spend two weeks inside the iron lung while recovering. It was an amazing device, but why don't we use it today. Well, first of all, you have to understand the polio vaccine came out and polio was all but eradicated by everyone in the world taking their vaccine like good boys and girls. It was good for the entire human race. Bit of a political message there. But why don't we need Iron lungs today in the COVID-19 pandemic. I think it's a bit like the story of train brakes. Instead of blowing the brakes on, turn it on its head, have the brakes always on and suck them off and if anything goes wrong, boom, the brakes are applied. And that's the modern development of the respirator. We breathe when the lungs expand. 
filling the airways with negative pressure and air, our atmosphere rushes in. And then we squeeze our lungs using our diaphragm and it goes away. Turn that on its head and you've got what we have today, positive pressure ventilation. The iron lung is known as an NPV or negative pressure ventilation. Iron lungs fill the patient's lungs by expanding a diaphragm by their feet, reducing the pressure in the sealed container, making the lungs expand and air rushes in the patient's nose, which is outside of the sealed chamber. The bellows then contract and air is pushed out. Modern respirators force air into our lungs and then we breathe out. But maybe, and I'm no ER doctor, and they didn't ask me to appear in the series ER, although I would have liked to, but isn't negative pressure ventilation a bit easier on the human body than positive pressure ventilation? So my question to you is, negative pressure or positive pressure? Should we bring back the iron lung? And should I start making one on the lathe? The truth is out there.